because it's actually quite simple in terms of the song structure for the first three or four minutes, but to keep track of where you are is very difficult for me because it's one bar, the second bar is the same, third bar is the same, fourth bar is different. One bar is the same, second bar is the same, third bar is the same, fourth bar is different. And then there's a fill uh, on the third time around, and then it does the same thing, and then and then there's a different fill the third, second time around, and then there's a different fill the fourth time around, third, fourth, and eighth, and so on and so forth. And so, even though it's just a very simple beat, something similar to that, remembering that, you know, I have to play that double this time, I have to play that double this time, I have to play that double this time, every time it comes around, I have to concentrate on where I am in the song rather than what I'm playing, and so, again, that in itself is a mind-splitting exercise in that I need to be able to play, obviously, four limbs, so that's an independence, I have to listen to music, and keep my track of where I am, but I also have to keep track of the loops that are recycling and when I have to do the double and things like that. Then we have, uh, you know, pure independence uh, exercises which are difficult. For instance, you know, the Manhattan Project, uh, where it's... Where he's playing a three note pattern and underneath that he's playing and things like that and that's probably one of the hardest things I ever had to try and learn and now I mean I can't play it I'm really bad trying to play stuff without the music I, I don't memorize things because I'm a very musically minded person and, and I need the music. So I don't have the music for all these songs that I'm talking about. So forgive me if I'm not playing exactly what Neil is playing. I'm just trying to demonstrate the difficulties that I've encountered to show you what is hard and what isn't. And so uh, while I cannot perform that thing right now, if I had the music on, I could play it flawlessly, you know, without a problem because to me, the drum part is part of the song, and the song is necessary for me to play the drum part. I mean, sure, I can play, I could probably sit down and play YYZ in its entirety without the music, just because I've played it a million times and heard it a million times. Likewise, Tom Sawyer, uh, probably Free Will, probably Natural Science, uh, these songs that I've just, Red Barchetta, things like that, Limelight. Uh, basically, those three albums, uh, from Permanent Waves to Signals, those three albums I could probably play. Most of those songs without the music from beginning to end. Uh, and I'm sure I'd leave out bars here and there, but... For the most part, I'm not a person who memorizes front to back and can play it without the, the band. Uh, I do need cues and I do listen to the cues and that's how I remember where I am so that I don't need to count stuff. And a perfect example of that is, and I think that Neil did this on purpose, um, there's actually there's two instances of it in uh, La Villa. At the beginning, there are basically four parts where Neil's playing the hi-hat. Uh, the first part is like... You know, and he plays that ten times. And then, he starts playing four on the hi-hat. Okay? And then... I think it's eight. Later, 
he's playing four on the hi-hat but then adding a snare. Okay, and then turns out 13 after that he adds the last kick. So first of all he's playing but then there's a little bass bobble. Getty plays, he's playing bass, but all of a sudden he hits a low note, boo, and then three bars later, it's, you add the third kick, or the fourth kick, so it's. And so, I don't have to count that anymore. At the, at the first, I, I analyzed the shit out of it, and it was like, oh, eight, ten, ten, no, ten, eight, thirteen, eight, seven? Nine? What is it? And then I just said, okay, I'm going to listen to the guitar, I'm going to listen to the bass, I'm going to listen to what's going on. And now, like I said, I have these little cues that I know where to sit here and count. One, two, three, because that gets hard, and if you forget, you're relying on it, and God forbid you don't know where the hell you are, and then you're going to come in, or not come in at the wrong time or the right time. So that's a little indication of, of how the structure of that song uh, makes it very difficult to perform exactly correct. Um, but there are little tricks you can use to do it. And then another part of that song where I think Neil uh, put in deliberate uh, marks for himself without disturbing the music uh, was in the little slow part where it, where it slows down and it goes and it goes like that. Okay, so if you listen carefully and if you've seen him in concert, the first four times, well, he doesn't do it exactly right in concert anymore, and I think the reason he doesn't is because he doesn't need the cues anymore. So he just keeps it simple and plays the same thing every bar. But, what he does on the album is this. Now I play it, I kind of cheat, because I don't want uh, to make a mistake that sounds inconsistent with what I am trying to play. So, what I play, okay, for the first four bars, is this. Alright, now what Neil plays is the same basic thing, but instead of playing a double on the hi-hat with his, with his uh, right hand, he plays... Now, to me, there's way too much chance for me to play instead of you hear the difference? One is a squelch, one is a hit and a hit with your foot, so it's Now, the advantage of doing that is that when you go to singles for the next two bars, you're not doing anything different other than not using your foot. So it's a trade-off. If you want consistency on the top and you have to make sure that you do those four hits in the exact right spot, or can you adjust enough to make doubles and singles work with your, what your right foot is doing, which is crazy, which is offbeat, and it's, you know, that's another hard thing to learn. But anyway, so basically it goes four twos and then just a one for two bars, and then it does two twos, and then the next ones are two ones. And it's this second one in the for in the tenth bar, which is the first time where he actually does squelch the hi-hat. So it's it's like this. Okay? And then he does a series of singles and doubles, singles and doubles, alternating. And then, you know, of course, every second bar he's doing a fill and stuff like that.